Um, I definitely feel like it's a little bit of both. I mean, you just got to have a will to want to go out there and just run the ball and just be dominant. And we just knew that we were going in. That's just something that we always strive to be as a dominant line and just offense, period. So that's just kind of what we practiced all week. I feel like we had great preparation going in, that we were very prepared. And I just felt like we went out there and it was just easy. We just executed. And usually when you have that good preparation come Saturday, it just happens. I'm sorry, one more time, what was the first part? As an offensive line, were you all excited going into the game about more design runs instead of the option type stuff? Um, I, I mean, I wouldn't say yes or no. I mean, really, I, I didn't think much about it. I mean, it's more of, I, I mean, I go out there and execute the game plan. So whatever we go through practice, it doesn't matter. I mean, I'm trying to execute certain things. I mean, there's things that I know I'm good at, but they also during the week of preparation, I always want to practice on things that I'm not the best at. So that's kind of what I focus on. There was really no time that I thought about, I was excited about this or that. It's just more of like, I'm just, I'm excited to play, period. Get out there and just whatever happens. It doesn't matter what the play call is. I mean, I just want to go out there and do what my best and just see if I can dominate the guy in front of me. From Florida State the third, you knew you'd getting the ball first. How excited were you about running that, that script and, and the halfback pass? On the yeah, I mean, I was excited. <laughs> I was uh, a little nervous because, I mean, look, Travis is a good runner. I didn't know how good of a uh, thrower he was going to be, a passer, but um, he did really good at practice through, through the week, so that kind of eased it up. But, I mean, I was just excited for him because, I mean, we get to go out there and have a little bit of fun. And, um, I mean, it was great execution. We wanted to score within the first three plays, something like that, just drive down and just uh, so our goal was to score in those first couple plays, and we just want to go out there and just have fun. And like I said earlier, I mean, we had great preparation. So when you have that good preparation, you just feel comfortable. And just coming in on Saturday it just makes things easier. You're just not as stressed out, and just you just play and have fun, play free. The O line seems to have had a problem over the last <clears throat> three games and getting a few penalties here and there. You've kind of kept your hands free of that, except for Saturday, you got your first penalty of the season. Yeah. What well, are you guys I, talking about inside that O line room to kind of to kind of? Get that all mm-hmm. corralled in and tore it out. Yeah, well, actually, so that actually wasn't my first. I, I will say that because I'm, I'm, I'm going to be home. I'm going to say that. I did have a false start at Syracuse, one of those. So, um, But, yeah, I mean, we, we've had a lot of false starts and penalties as an offensive line group, which we need to cut out. Um, we had a few this game. But those things can really hurt you. I mean, going back to the North Carolina game, those are some big, big-time penalties that we had that kind of hurt drives. So, I mean, those, this biggest thing is we for our plan to win, one of our – uh, one of the goals on there is to be the least penalized team. So when you're the least penalized team, it kind of helps you out you know, winning the game-wise. So we just got to cut those out. I mean, it, it's not like it's something that it can't be done. I mean, it's simple little things. Like, it's just kind of focusing in a little bit more, not letting little outside noise kind of get in your head and kind of screwing you up. But something that we focus on each week, and, and I feel like we've gotten better with it. I mean, that North Carolina game, we jumped off a lot. So just kind of fe- keep focusing on that. Don't get your mind thinking like, okay, I didn't have any false starts this week. I can kind of relax a little bit. I mean, you've got to be locked in each week to prepare and just don't let that inside no- or outside noise kind of disrupt you. One of the coaches have pointed to a crowd noise in North Carolina and a few other instances where noise bothers you guys. But after being in, in places like Texas A&M and other venues and the noise they have there, how is it comparable to going to North Carolina and say that that, that place affected you a little bit more than a place with 90,000 on top of you did? Um, I mean, I think it just it, – there's a lot of different factors and scenarios, I guess you could say. So, I mean, each different stadium has their own little unique thing. So, I mean, each week you can – doesn't. I feel like for me personally, it doesn't matter where you play. I mean, it, it can – it can be the little things. I mean, sometimes it's not even the crowd noise, it's the defense. Maybe they're doing something that may is trying to kind of mess with you a little bit here and there. But it, I feel like it's just not like a stadium in a way. I mean, they, they trust me, a stadium can – fans can really screw up offense, I mean, if they're loud enough and things like that. But I feel like we always have preparation coming in here. We'll come in the uh, – during the uh, – during like if we have away games, we'll always come in the indoor and kind of have music playing that's really loud and trying to get in our heads so we can get used to it. But – Really, I mean, there's a lot of different factors that go into it. I forget what part of the game it was, but I'm looking through the glasses and I see Jackson burying some dude at the numbers 15 mm-hmm. yards behind the line of scrimmage, just burying him. Yeah. Is that the most physical game you guys have played? Because it happened more than once for a number of you guys. Yeah. Um, I think for some guys, this probably was a physical game. I mean, there's a lot of knockdowns, I think. So, I mean, I think each. As a, maybe as an offensive line, yeah, I think we played a very physical game, and that's what we wanted to do. I mean, we, we 
I keep harping back to the, the preparation. I mean, we had a great week of practice, and not just because, I mean, we had a bad week before, two weeks before. It's just because that was the next game, and that's what, something that we need to harp on, especially since we're a young team. We can't just say, like, hey, we had a bad week two weeks ago. Let's really have a good week now because we're pissed off that we played bad. we got to make sure that we keep focus and give our best preparation because it's the next big game. I mean, I, I try to tell the guys that it's a one-game season mentality. So, I mean, it's that next game. Don't worry about what's in the past. Learn from your mistakes, learn from the success and things like that, but don't get focused on too much in the future and who, what else is to come. Just lock in on that week. You guys are an old group at the top. Yes. But a very young group behind you guys. Mm -hmm. Was there ever a point during those two weeks where you guys just had a, an offensive line meeting and, and kind of talked among yourselves? Um, I mean, we always communicate to ourselves. I mean, me, John, and Tremaine are roommates. So, I mean, we're always talking. So that's three of the five guys up front. I mean, and but I mean, yeah, we always kind of talk, and we we know whether we're the veteran group on the offense, and um, so we try to give what we information what we can. But I mean, we, I feel like we've got a very mature group. I mean, we got a lot of guys that have played experience as, as offense, and um, but I think we've got a lot of good leaders. Uh, all positions that really step up and just kind of show how things are meant to go. You guys on the offensive line enjoy it when those defensive linemen come in and run the I formation? I do. Yeah, I do. I, it can be frustrating sometimes because those guys that that have never really experienced of how to run the ball or have been on the offensive side. And, and I trust me, I've been in their shoes because, I mean, I tried to transfer over, so I had no idea coming over. So, I mean, it can be kind of frustrating sometimes when they don't actually like you. We're out there and we just we're quick because we've been doing it. We've practiced it every day. We do the same thing all the time. So it's just second nature for us. It's just we don't think much. We can just go. But those guys have no idea. Like we'll make calls that they've probably never heard before, and they're just kind of like whatever. So we kind of have to help them out. But I mean, I love it because I mean, it is, it's it's fun for them because they get to come to the other side and kind of experience what we get to do. And anytime we can get a good guy to uh, get a guy to score a touchdown that's from the defense is always big. Which I love when Christian did it, and we always brought Dexter and them over. So I mean, I enjoy it. Um, it's fun just to kind of switch things up. Um, I mean, I, I I wouldn't say yes or no, but honestly, I just think we just prepared well. I mean, like I, I've said it a lot. I mean, just that preparation, and when you when you prepare and you're ready for a game on Saturday, it just makes things easier. And we just, I mean, we wanted to dominate. I mean, that's what we kind of talked about. But I wouldn't say people were more angry or pissed off. I mean, I just think they just would have prepared and just made it easier. I mean, it was just kind of going out there and just doing your thing.